What you're looking at right now is one of the most important developments in the global EV industry this year in 2025, and it didn't come from Detroit or Stuttgart or Tokyo or Silicon Valley. It came from Shenzhen, China, which is a brilliant place to visit, by the way, from a company called BYD. You've probably heard of it. Tiny little company. As of December 18th, 2025, so for several days ago, that company has now produced 15 million new energy vehicles. So they are EVs and plug-in hybrid vehicles combined. So 15 million of those electrified vehicles. That is a huge number. And for context, we'll break down what it means and where BYD has come from, where it's going to, why it matters globally, and why they're kind of just about to come, you know, basically consume the European market. They're, they're going to do extremely well. Let's start with the really, really hard but basic facts. So on 18th of December 2025, BYD celebrated rolling the 15 millionth NEV new energy vehicle off the production line at its Jinan factory in China a Denza N8L SUV. So if you didn't know, Denza is the posh version. It's like the Lexus to Toyota. Denza is the posh version to BYD. Uh, that marks a milestone that very, very few automakers have approached. That 15 million figure now exceeds the cumulative lifetime EV production of Tesla, which is around 8.1 million-ish uh, battery electric vehicles, and v Volkswagen groups combined battery, electric vehicles, and hybrid vehicle production, which is under 3 million. So that's mad, isn't it? Now, that number, 15 million, is not just a headline. It's the result of explosive growth in the last few years. It's just a few short years as well. According to production data, BYD reached 10 million NEVs in late 2024. So this, I'm going to get a bit geeky in the next minute. Loads of data. It's mad. It's really, honestly, it's really hard to just reconcile it and com com just think about it, you know? So, in uh, then they added another 5 million vehicles in roughly 13 months. So up to 2024 at the end, they'd made, they'd, you know, made 10 million NEVs. Since then, in the last year and a bit, year and a month, they've done another 5 million. That is, that kind of scale up is just unprecedented in the automotive industry. Wild. But where did it all begin? Well, uh, in the 90s, 1995, BYD wasn't always uh, a global EV powerhouse like it is now in, in this last few years. The company started quite modestly as a tech company, also producing uh, rechargeable battery uh, batteries for tech and for computers and tech and things like that, and little screen devices. And then they got into the auto business after that, and they acquired an existing automaker in 2003. I can't remember what month, but 2003, and then in its first new energy vehicle rolled out in 2008, uh, it was the F3DM. Obviously, really classy name, BYD F3DM. Uh, that was genuinely what they called it, but whatever. Plug-in hybrid. That was a good car. I remember seeing it on the news, actually, which was the fir world's first mass-produced plug-in hybrid. From there, growth was very, very steady, but not yet meteoric, of course. I'm not sure how many they sold, but it probably wasn't too many back in the day. Here is the timeline. May 2021. One millionth new energy vehicle produced. That was just four years ago. One million cars. May 2002, uh, 22. Two million. So in that year, they'd sold another million. Uh, August 2023. So another year and a bit later. Five million vehicles in total sold. November 2024, 10 million NEV sold. And then this month, 15 millionth vehicle sold. So that is the most exponential trajectory you could imagine. It is insane. I see why. For the last few years, I've been driving and reporting in uh, on different cars and BYDs. And I think it's a bit of a a jump for someone who's never experienced one to to really it's really hard to see how good it is compared to something that we're just used to like toyota's volkswagen's something like that we a lot of people use companies like fiat as a sort of benchmark as well enough said about that that acceleration tells you everything you need to know about the pace of electrification so the time between milestones collapsed dramatically very small windows of time and they're selling you know years and years worth of, of cars as demand and production capacity soared in this last three, four years. Hello folks, Ben Alexander here. Thank you very much for tuning in. Really appreciate your time. Happy Christmas to everybody. Guyul til mir nosh gewinner. And uh, it's not just about the headline figure, I don't think. In the first 11 months of this year, BYD produced 4.2 million vehicles. 4.18 actually, and uh, which was 11% 
more than the same period in the previous year. So even as China's EV make market slowed down and showed uh, mixed signals actually, overseas sales reached 917,000 vehicles, already exceeding total BYD exports from uh, the full year of 2024. One model that really illustrates BYD's reach is the BYD Seagull, the Dolphin, the Atto One, it's got a few names. The little tiny city-friendly EV that just hit a million cumulative sales after just 25 months on the market, which is brilliant. And that is a very significant thing because it shows BYD's strength is not just in big SUVs or premium offerings, but in affordable mass market vehicles too. Another is the BYD Song Plus series, a compact SUV family that hit its one millionth unit back in 2024. I can't remember the month, but it was 2024, underscoring how Chinese EVs are resonating with buyers in multiple markets around the world. I've got to say, the Seagull is, is beyond doubt the most talked about BYD that I'm aware of. It's wild. The comments sections all over the uh, all over YouTube, all over my videos. I've never seen a response uh, to a car like that ever. It was that's the only car that's had that sort of response. So I'm pretty sure they're going to sell quite well. What does this mean in the bigger picture? First, it seems to firmly position BYD as the most prolific NEV producer in the world. Quite clearly, when you look at the data, it's it's important to note that the 15 million figure counts both battery electric vehicles and hybrids. You've got to remember that. Tesla's 8.1 million figure is literally just battery electric vehicles alone, while Volkswagen's cumulative EV output is under 3 million. And that includes battery electric vehicles and hybrids. So even so, surpassing both with a single integrated strategy signals a major shift in global auto industrial might. Obviously, we can see a big shift happening in the last few years. From a competitive standpoint, this dynamic is reshaping the narrative about electric vehicle leadership outside of Europe or the US. It's no longer about maybe GM, actually, or it's no longer about Germany or Volkswagen anymore. We can clearly see what is happening. Even all of the, all of the news, there's American people and European people going to China, making videos talking about how China is way ahead. You know, really, really cheap, amazing futuristic cars and we are still using cars with keys, you know? And this, you'll know, anyone who's gone from a petrol car or something like that, and you've gone to an, a car where you just walk to it, it feels so old fashioned, doesn't it? To stick a little thing in it that's had some metal bit shaved off it, and kind of satisfying, but a bit old fashioned, it feels a bit primitive. Anyway, legacy automakers have invested very, very heavily in electrification, but many are struggling to match the volume cost efficiency and rapid production scaling that a vertically integrated model like BYD's enables. BYD makes its own batteries, uh, computers, tech, hardware, software, powertrains, everything really, which gives it an edge in controlling uh, supply chains, cost, profit margins, and uh, international markets tell a very, very similar story. In the UK, BYD has built up a cumulative 50,000 sales since its market entry in uh, March 2023, I think it was, March, with sales accelerating significantly in 2025. It was multiple times uh, what it was last year. So that is a big deal. Even more telling is how BYD's expansion strategy varies by region. In markets like India, it's taking a premium-oriented approach with models like the SEAL and the EMAX 7, whereas in Europe and Australasia, it's basically embracing volume and diverse product offerings. They're even coming out with the BYD Dolphin G, which is the hybrid version of a, a, a BYD Dolphin, basically, just for the European market. So there are challenges. No, no exponential growth cycle is without them, obviously, and uh, some analysts note that demand in China has shown signs of slowing slightly in certain segments this year, and that global economic uncertainty is pushing buyers to be more cautious, basically. But BYD's export momentum and product breadth and the, you know, the beautiful selection of cars they've got, really, they're just selling them to the world and everyone's pretty surprised how good they are. Uh, from affordable city cars, luxury cars, Denza as well, they've got the Denza brand, gives it a diversified base to weather short-term fluctuations. And uh, yeah, remember, this company completely phased out internal combustion engine vehicles uh, in 2022, choosing to double down on new energy vehicles 
years ahead of many of the competitors. Uh, that early decision, often criticised at the time, by the way, now looks like a strategic masterstroke. I'm going to call it a masterstroke. That was a genius decision. 2022, brilliant timing. Here is the takeaway. BYD is not just selling a lot more EVs, it's redefining the scale and the pace at which electrification can happen globally. It's ramped up from hundreds of thousands of units to tens of millions in under a decade. It's, a, it's brilliant, it's really quite a fantastic display really. It's overtaken legacy EV leaders in cumulative production at this point, multiple even when you add some together, and it's doing so with both affordable and premium products for viewers wondering why this matters, this shift has enormous implications for supply chains, uh, battery technology leadership, pricing pressure on legacy brands. We're seeing the slow demise of certain legacy brands as well. And we can start to see uh, a, a bit of a pattern now. Companies clearly just look like they're panicking. What do you think? Please let me know in the comments. Really interested to know what people have got to say about this. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching.